G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so very good to see you. I do hope that you are well. And I want to thank you so much after my recent video about the fact that we're in lockdown and uh, all of your just amazing comments. And I really want to let you know that I absolutely love making these videos and I love sharing my thoughts on all of these different subjects. And it was really just more, is it okay that, uh, that I can't get out into the broader world? And is it okay to still keep making this stuff even so my palette is much smaller? And you gave me so many amazing ideas and thoughts and um, opportunities to explore different things. So you've really got my mind ticking. I'm super pumped about it. And I can't wait to try and, try and uh, as they say in judo, use someone else's energy to your benefit. Well, I am going to use all of your amazing energy that you've given to me to benefit us and the channel. So thank you very much. I love what I do here. I love the community and I, I love what I've done my whole life. Literally since I was about 14, 13 years of age, I've loved photography and filmmaking and I've never stopped. So thank you for allowing me to continue to never stop. Today's video is a big nerdy video. I want to chat about curved sensors. It's just a bit of a chat, a rumination. Sony has recently released a new patent, which just gets it back in the conversation, and I think it's worth talking about. So if you're into a little bit of a nerdy chat, then hang in for the next five or 10 minutes. All right, let's do it. So curved sensors, what does it mean? Well, it's as literal as it sounds. Right now, as we know, all of the sensors that we use in our 35mm, our APS-C, our medium format cameras and so on, they're all flat. And here's the thing, it would actually be better, it would be better for light capturing if, if they were curved, like so. And because they're flat, it actually means that lenses have to be made to compensate for the fact that they're not curved. The human eye over millions of years of evolution, of course, is curved. And that means it, it, the way we see the world, the way the world is rendered to us is astonishing. And I don't know if you've ever noticed, and this is something that, especially when I first started photography, it's like, I see something, it looks amazing, and now I've got to render it. And I've, I say this a lot, we've got to render it in this flat medium. So not only is the sensor or the film plane that we've always worked with flat, but then the outcome is also flat. So how do we bring dimensionality back to an image? Now, I've always talked about that, and that's the end product, but it would actually be easier for camera manufacturers to have curved sensors. Now, we know why sensors are not curved, and that's basically because of legacy. And the legacy is film. And the idea of uh, the film plane being curved somewhat, however they decide to curve it, it would have been very difficult to pass film over that plane and get it to go into the curve and then back out, especially with cameras like a 35mm camera where the film is moving. Maybe maybe it might have been possible with, a, with the one shot at a time, but if you think about all the mechanisms and how they worked in regards to pulling things in and out and making sure that they didn't get exposed to light, we can see now through the creation and advent of photography as we know it today, in the year 2021, that making the mechanism flat was significantly easier than having made it curved. And I don't know if they thought about it in the start of photography almost, uh, well, yeah, aren't we somewhere between 150 and 200 years now when it first kicked off? I think we are. And so we can see, and definitely in the 35 mil days as the film, you know, the film used to fly across and you could shoot at whatever frames per second, there's just no way it could have been a curved thing. So flat makes sense. Then when we moved from film to the digital plane, obviously they needed to make the sensors to match all the glass, all the legacy glass that we had, because of course, all of the Nikon glass that I had 
was able to just go from my F mount SLR to my F mount DSLR. And that was absolutely fantastic and it worked. Today we're dealing with an enormous amount of legacy. As I said at the opening, curved would allow lenses to be less complicated because the curvature is taking into account everything that the lenses have to take into account. Or maybe maybe not everything, maybe they would work more in concert and it would certainly depend on the amount of curvature and we go much further than this and we get outside my pay grade and I would love an optical engineer or any type of engineer or anyone just more knowledgeable than me to jump into the comments. But the bottom line is curved sensors would potentially make lenses less complicated smaller, lighter. Thus, the transition from a flat sensor to a curved sensor, I think might be a difficult one in the sense of you've literally just got to decide, I'm gonna buy a curved sensor system now. So let's just quickly talk about the Sony patent. And it appears that that's probably for mobile phones, you know, small, uh, applications, inbuilt lens applications. And it makes perfect sense. If you're mobile phones, there's no detachable lenses. They build everything is, it's basically like a prime compact camera, isn't it? It's a compact fixed lens camera in every mobile phone, in every cell phone, and they can design lenses for each sensor. We know that every phone, like, like one of the biggest parts of how mobile phones are sold is, is on their cameras. And I can't believe, really, to be honest, that they continue to push the envelope with cell phones slash mobile phones as we call them here in Australia. Maybe I'll just call them phones. They continue to push it. Everybody wants more and more and more. And the fact is that if you could use a curved sensor and then thus make a slightly less complicated lens array, that would make everything smaller. And it would, I mean, also things like vignetting on the edgeness and, and corner sharpness, all these sorts of things get improved with a curved sensor. So, curved sensors in our world, in the 35 millimeter world, or the medium format world, or the APS-C world, maybe someone like Sigma might do it, because they've made some unusual cameras, and they make lenses. Um, but I kind of don't see it happening anytime soon. Now, the only reason that it might happen is if they could work with current lenses, if it's possible to work a way around it with current lenses. Now, that just has me to thinking that it's possible. It, could it be possible that they put some sort of adapter in between the lens and the curved sensor, that if you've got a traditional lens, it can bend the light to work on the curved sensor, and maybe you'll lose a stop in, like maybe it's a bit like a teleconverter, but it, but it bends light. Uh, is that possible? And if that's possible, well then, I think these things could come sooner. It's just a theory that just popped into my head right here while I was nerding out. And isn't this why it's so good? Because it's all about getting the old cogs in the brain working. Uh, like a speed booster. That's the sort of thing. You know, you get speed boosters in cameras. Could you, get, could you get a speed booster to make traditional lenses work on a curved sensor lens? Anybody out there, let me know. And if that's the case, then maybe, maybe someone like Sony, who is already working on it, could create a curved sensor, they could create some sort of speed booster in the middle and then put all of the traditional lenses on it and then as time passes, we slowly move over to a curved sensor universe. It's interesting and I think it's a possibility. Do any of us need to worry about it? No, please don't worry about it. As we all know, whether you're an RF mount or whether you're EF mount or whether you're E mount or whether you're Z mount or F mount, M mount, and all the other mounts, I can't remember them all. As I always say, any camera new that you buy today, and even really going back a decade, depending on your use case, is giving you absolutely outstanding results. This isn't gonna change anything in regards to the quality of what you can create. And remember, we wanna make art. What it may do sometime in the future is make your camera a bit smaller and lighter and if lenses are smaller and less complicated they might be cheaper and that's really the impact but it is not going to change your capacity to shoot and it is not going to change the capacity for you to do amazing things with what you've got right now but it's fun to nerd out and it's fun to know that there's still potentially more technological advancement that can continue to improve our experience and we still might be able to have the amazing, say, 35mm experience that we have today, 
but with even smaller and lighter gear that renders even more accurately and vignettes even less. And this could be the next big step. And if you think about it, of the three main mounts that we have today, the Canon, Sony and Nikon, Sony is the oldest of those three and potentially, seeing as they're working on this stuff, it may well be in their future, it may well be in our future, and it's interesting. It's just a matter of always, always when you make a great transition, like we've done F to Z, and we've done EF to RF, and all of the great transitions when you go from the Apple Intel chips to the M1 chips, it's usually a multi-year and it can often be a bumpy road to transition. And if this does come, please everybody, don't worry about it, don't get stressed about it, because it will take, it will be years in the making for a system to come out and mature. And, and, if, and if it happens, it'll be amazing, but it won't be amazing on day one. It'll take a little while. Anyway, as I said, this was just really a, a nerdy, conversation thought piece it's been lovely to have you here and i would really love as many varied thoughts around this topic as possible because i think it's just fun to speculate on these things i love technology speculating on it and uh yeah please share the love fantastic to see you if this is your first time here golly gosh i would love to see you again so please do subscribe please share Please like, it's so good for the video, helps the algorithm. Don't forget, we've got channel membership. The join button is literally just below this video, just there. Hats and apparel and so on. Where's my hat? Here's my hat. Still love this hat. Still might be my favorite, not sure. Remember, make art, not war. They're all good. Just like every person out there in the universe. We're all good. Okay, love your work. See you later. <laughs>